environmentalism is just looking after your home. When I got out of art school knowing I was going to be an impoverished artist, but painting was everything for me, it didn't matter. I wouldn't have money because I would have the biggest garden in the world. That was the rivers and the lakes and the hills, which all belonged to us. You don't get much wealthier than that. So when someone came along one day and started to take it away, is that when you become an environmentalist? I'm not sure. It's just a natural thing to fight against it. Uh, my name is Sam Mann. I live in the country. Um, I've always wanted to live in the country. I was raised in the country. But oddly enough, everybody else who lives in the country thinks of me as an imposter, which is fine because that's what artists should be. They should put everybody on edge. So it's my job to put the world on edge. An artist is a different thing for different people. You know? If you say, am, am I an artist? It puts me into a box, I think. What I like to think is I'm a renaissance kind of character, a bit of an engineer as well. It's called the one percent and it's kind of um, self-explanatory. Whenever I, this thing's on public display, kids love it. They just want to see all the movement. But at the same time, you've got this idea that this one person being supported by all these hard-working people down here. You've got cattle being crammed into boxes, the dairy industry, you've got a guy trying to catch a fish, he can't pull it in, it's got no meat on it anyway. Women children. Right at the centre of all this sort of nasty darkness is you've got Ronald McDonald slowly turning and grinning at the whole thing. Everybody on their backs has the label of some bank. Well New Zealand seems to look very pretty to anybody who visits it. Environmental Disneyland in a way. The way I view it is uh, when you're a kid you make a cake for your friend out of dirt and flies and you put beautiful icing on the top with, with little sprinkles. We do, we have this icing. We've got to be careful because underneath that there's a lot of dirt and we have to somehow make the whole structure good. What's wrong with the rivers? What's wrong with them is how I measure them against when I was young. Drink from any river in Canterbury without worrying about getting sick. If a kid goes to a river today, they might think, oh well, we can't drink this water, that's natural. We can't swim in it, that's natural. That's how things are. So we take our daughter to one of the four main rivers in Canterbury. We will find cyanobacteria mats at the sides of the old swimming holes just lurking. And we're reluctant to take her there. Art should change people's minds, and that it's a tool. Uh, just as in a conversation, uh, if I want to change your mind, I could choose music, writing, dance, something. I've, I've, I've picked the best tool for the job. We've done so many things to try and attract public attention. We started a political group uh, called We Can. Our party launch was in the middle of the Avon River. We had a, a table set up with candelabras and wine, and, and, and every time we do something like that, it gets into the front page, right? And that's the trick. If you can make the enemy laugh, then you're winning. Art, art has to be fun. And when I made the Nick Smith sculpture, laughter reigned. <laughs> so I spent the whole winter making a life-size sculpture of Nick with his nuts hanging out, taking a crap in a glass of water. And we drove it up to Nelson, where every Saturday he has his caravan at the local market. So here's this huge freaking thing, right beside his caravan. Nick opens the door, looks out, sees himself there, jumps back into the caravan for about two minutes and then he jumps out again and ran away. And I thought to myself, this is art at its best, at its very best. And what was cool about it was that mothers and their kids were all having their photographs taken beside Nick's testicles. And nobody was upset, everybody was laughing. It's a tricky thing to carry off if you can have everybody happy and at the same time break their hearts. Tonight we have a special guest, uh, the Leader of the Opposition, the Honourable Judith Collins. Welcome, please. I thought it would be quite nice to have those um, spitting image puppets where you can um, create uh, an image of the politician and then create these uh, dialogues with them. Again, entertaining, but somehow get the knives in there at the same time. Do you think politics has been an unhealthy occupation for you too? Are you ready to retire? I get thousands of emails from people that saying you just can't do it. Video is another tool. Every bit of t technology when I come across it is, I think, how can I use this as a tool to better express my ideas? 
in that, using video, you're also saying what is the public used to watching? What are they most attuned to watching or looking at at the moment? So you choose their medium and then you invade it. Send us down some foot and mouth disease Cause our country's running From the mountains to the seas We shit Just turn up. Turn up in the street. If there's a protest, turn up. People will see the numbers. And politicians who have the power to make change will only take note when there's a bunch of people. If you meet a politician in a room and talk about a problem, nothing's going to happen. So the best you can do is go out on the street and be seen. And so with awareness, there's a slow turning. So we do have that hope that in this country there is a turning, I can feel now. There is a weighing against that farming lobby now, which says it's not good enough. We need to be able to take our children to a river without them getting sick. Simple. Make your voice known and don't be afraid because there's plenty of us around there to back you up. Send us down some food and mouth disease because our country's running from the mountains to the sea. In shit. Oh, for fuck's sake. We've had enough of it. For me, this is like a learning playground. I came here, I didn't have a clue what permaculture was, I didn't have a clue about growing my own food. If you had told me like three years ago that I'd be really passionate and interested in sharing videos about gardening and food forests, I would have told you that you're crazy. Permaculture isn't gardening. Permaculture is a framework, a toolkit of, of changing the way you think about the world and the way you interact with it in a way that's creating the future that we want.